Hi everyone, it's your boy Zach talking about my least favorite subject, which is British newspapers. Uh, I hate referring to them so much because every time you do, I guess people still read newspapers in Britain. <laughs> um, so if you mention like, oh, I saw this in the Daily Mail, they'll be like, you can't trust the Daily Mail. It's for bloody Tories or whatever, whatever. Uh, okay, so um, plot twist or spoiler: the UK isn't real. Nobody's ever been there. It's just an in joke that the United States, Canada, and Sweden we just made up this like fake country where people talk wrong. They say no. It's not real. You've never been to the UK and you have never met anyone from the UK. Anyway, yeah, so anytime you mention any of the UK papers, people always say, oh, you can't bloody trust it all. Whatever. I, I don't know which political party The Guardian uh, belongs to. The only UK paper uh, I like is the Daily Mail because they usually like write when something happens. They will have an article, a full article, and like every picture available and like a map of like whatever the terrorist attack or whatever, um, like literally within like two hours or even an hour. So that's why I like them because they have good pictures and they have good diagrams. Um, but they're run by the bloody Tories, they is. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know which one, which one. I think they're like the conservative paper, right? But I don't know what the conservative is. The conservative party in the UK just called the conservatives. I feel like it probably is. Anyway, the UK isn't real and you can't prove that it is. Um, uh, but anyway, so uh, Alan Moore, um, he did this editorial. Uh, it doesn't seem to be listed as an editorial, but it's, it's an editorial. So um, for people who don't know, Alan Moore isn't real. <laughs> Because no, because, because the UK isn't real. It doesn't exist. No, uh, Alan Moore, very famous uh, writer, also very famously a, uh, a curmudgeon, a contrarian, uh, a warlock, um, a w wizard. Um, he likes attention. Um, but he retired from comics. What was it, like 2018? And one of the last things he did was he gave... Uh, an interview and oh no it was like a fake letters column and there was a like a fake person who was named like Herman S. Comicsgate or something stupid like that like you could tell he like just heard about it and he's like it's the bloody Tories it is I don't know um, but it was very like I remember at the time all the usual suspects were like take that take that and it's like Weren't you calling this guy a rapist for like the last decade? For people who don't know, um, there's a lot of rape uh, in Alan Moore's stories. So SJW started saying like that he like liked it or supported it. So it was very weird for them maligning him as like a rape apologist or something like that. To he says something like very inexpert um, about uh, Comicsgate and also the UK isn't real. <laughs> it's not real it doesn't exist um but um it was just weird like all these people who had been maligning him for a decade all of a sudden wanted to use him as like on their side but he um he gets trotted out or i think he actually like requests every time there is an election uh he comes out and he endorses the bloody tories i don't know I, that's the only UK, actually, the UK isn't real. Um, it, that's the only UK party I know the name of. <laughs> um, but every uh, every election for both the UK and uh, America, he does an editorial. And surprise, he doesn't support the conservative or Republican or Tory or whatever. He always goes for the left wing candidate. It's just really boring. Um, so he wrote this editorial and I think he really wanted to like have it go viral, but like he's talking about Comicsgate, like it's like 2018 
And it's just very, like, random. Um, so he's talking about fandom, and then he's like, you know, let me make it clear. Fandom is great, uh, but also there are negative aspects of fandom. So it's like, all right, fine. And then he just starts talking about, like, fandom in the 60s. And it's kind of like, yeah. Well, I'm not going to say old man. I'm going to be respectful of my elders. But I'm just going to say, uh, where are we going with this, Alan? <laughs> and it's like, oh, oh, I remember the back in the day. Uh, Chippy Whistles was only two penny foldings. See, so it was. Um, and so he was talking about, um, I mean, people, uh, does the average American comic book fan know who Jim Bakey is? Eh, probably not. Um but it it just it, it kind of drones on. He's an older gentleman, and um, uh, it doesn't feel like it was edited. It, they just kind of let him go on, and uh, uh, it, it's it's very much the rambling, like uh, park bench type of conversation where you're just being respectful. Of your elders and you are nodding and it's like, oh, he doesn't like Donald Trump or Boris Johnson. Oh, okay. Did anyone expect him to? <laughs> like, um, so, yeah, I mean, uh, he had a good line here about um, fandom where he says, you don't need the machete or the megaphone, basically saying you can talk with your inside voice. Uh, but I was like, uh, like some of these things are just, I don't know. He's like, our entertainments may be cancelled prematurely through an adverse fan reaction, and we may endure largely misogynist crusades such as Gamergate or Comicsgate from those who think gate means conspiracy and that Nixon's disgrace was predicated on a plot involving water. And this is the part where you were on the park bench and he sat down and he just started talking. He just nod because you were taught to respect your elders. And you just go like, oh, geez, wonder how long this is going to go. So um, I saw some people be offended by this. I saw some people just be mostly confused by it. Mostly it was just ignored um, because, you know, it's it, comic skate 2024, like. Gamergate? <laughs> Gamergate preceded Comicsgate by what, like five years? Like this is, this is, uh, I don't know. It, it's like in Venom 3, where even though it's set in the present day, there's like a 1970s hippie family. So it's like, it's, it's an anachronism. Uh, but the one thing I was thinking about, I forget how this, um, uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> The photograph is by Joe Brown, whose email address is Joe Stupid Stupid at AOL.com. <laughs> this reminds me of being in the National Guard and, you know, having to do a recall roster and get everyone's phone number and email. But it's like, like people didn't even have like, army email accounts yet so it would just be like rolling on dubs 420 at hotmail.com <laughs> and you have to like write that down um but uh joe stupid stupid at aol.com you know usually i say like don't contact this person i feel like a guy who puts his aol email of joe stupid stupid at aol.com Write them. Don't be a jerk. Just be like, sup? I think you have a really cool email address. Where did you come up with Joe Stupid Stupid? Um, but anyway, yeah, like it's uh, basically it's just there's about to be an election and Alan Moore wanted to say that he doesn't like Donald Trump. So he has a contact at The Guardian and they gave him a word limit and he stayed within it and they just printed whatever but the thing i wanted to talk about besides just talking about how good greg capullo was on x-force um beyond video the new dragon 
quest game um, is I'm not a huge fan of Alan Moore. I would always kind of try. Uh, I would say he's the literary um, equivalent of Mindy Kaling <laughs> in that my brain always tries to be like, oh, she's 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 almost pretty. And then it's like, but she isn't. She's close to being a little bit pretty, but she isn't. So with all of his books, it's like it gets like I yeah I, I I'm I, I don't like it. It's I get close to liking it, but I just don't like it. I think the thing that I actually did like is he wrote Wildcats, um, in the mid nineteen nineties. He wasn't even that old. He was like forty, um, but it was when he was regretting like the the darker stuff from the 1980s so he just did he just wrote like some cool superhero adventures like that was a really fun it was very basic but it was a good solid superhero run i think that's the only thing like i just really really liked that he did um but um uh i always have to commend him for rorschach although i think it's one of his great regrets in that he created this character, and I think I've talked about I don't remember if I've done a full video on this. But he hates, hates that conservatives, Republicans, I think even libertarians, love Rorschach. And the reason they do is because he is a good writer. I just don't like his stuff. Um, but he will give, you know, uh, all sorts of different qualities good and bad to all of his characters. So you were supposed to hate Rorschach. He was supposed to be a reactionary. He was supposed to be a racist. But his racism seemed more just like ignorance than actually hating other people because of uh, their race. And it wasn't really that heavy. Um, but what he did is he gave like the most universally admirable traits, all of them just to Rorschach and then he maxed out the stats on all of them. So so what do you, like every culture ever admire? Bravery, loyalty, being a good friend, good sense of humor, being brave. I think I already said that one. <laughs> it's like one in the morning. Um, also, he gives the best, most sincere apology in the history of fiction. And people love Rorschach. And I think the main thing, uh, the main takeaway about um, Alan Moore is he wanted things to go differently. Um, and he wanted people to take things differently than they did. Um, so I think his, his career is a lot of frustration and regret. Also, in the Zack Snyder movie, it drives me nuts how quickly the Rorschach blots on the mask change. If you watch or if you read the comic, you can kind of gauge from the amount of dialogue how quickly they change. And it's slow, but in the movie it's like super fast, distracting. But anyway, yeah, just a, just a, rambling, uh, a rambling video covering a rambling article about uh, uh, elder statesman in comics who just wants to remind you that he doesn't like Trump. <laughs> okay, I don't know. I, I was debating whether to do a video about endorsing Trump or not. And then I saw, does anyone remember, uh, well, he didn't die, he's still around. Billy Eichner, he, he did a movie, it was called like Gays or something like that. And it was like, it's a gay romance and it's mainstream and nobody cared. But like, he did a TikTok where he was like super serious. He's like, if Trump is elected, everything will end. And it just made me think how stupid it is when people like endorse, like people come up with their own decisions. Like who cares? I came up with my own decisions for my own reasons. Um, but yeah, so it's, um, this is actually a very regular thing. It's like every two years, every time there is an election national election or some sort of huge referendum in the UK or America, Alan Moore will uh, ring uh, his contact at The Guardian or whoever, write an op-ed piece that doesn't really 
affect anything. It just kind of says, hey, I don't like Trump, or I don't like Boris Johnson, or I don't like the bloody Tories. Anyway, um, uh, let's wrap this up just by looking at some amazing Greg Capullo art from 1992. Uh, there we go. That's pretty good. Nice stuff. Yeah, good stuff. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I was busy today, but it was one of those days where like nothing like, it's just like, little tasks so it wasn't one of those days like i really felt like i did something so it's kind of a unsatisfying end to a long uh but productive day but nothing no major tasks were accomplished today so it's like that's why i'm up it just doesn't feel like it feels like do something and then <laughs> i don't know anyway thanks for watching bye